For me, making art is driven by this central, this inner urge um, of touching the soul of another human being. Um, I believe that's the ultimate act um, for me as an artist. So it's something that I strive for. It drives me to keep on searching, to keep on developing and to get up in the morning and get to my studio and, and, and start again. Welcome to Lo-Fi Podcast. Um, I'm John Wentz. Uh, this is a new podcast I've been thinking about putting together for a couple years now and finally getting a good opportunity or a good excuse rather to get it done. Right now I'm in Leiden in the Netherlands at an artist residency um, at Art House Holland called Project 1606. It's myself with five artists and what I wanted to do, I thought this was a good opportunity to interview each artist one by one. I've been here two weeks getting to know everybody, working um, literally side by side with some of these artists. Uh, maybe you can hear some of them in the background. We've been living in the same house together, um, almost like a reality show. So uh, I felt this was a good opportunity to put together something, an idea I've had, which was basically uh, an American living in Europe interviewing European artists. I'm going to be putting out a lot of these episodes in the next couple of weeks because we have two weeks left on the residency. So it's far more than I intend to put out once this is over, which would maybe be about uh, two a month. So um, with that being said, I want to introduce the first episode. It's my friend Dan Nopin. Uh, Dan, I've been working side by side with him here. He's actually a permanent resident here uh, who helped put together the, the residency and the Atelier Project 1606 um, and he's been such an accommodating human being and somebody I consider a good friend at this point. I've had many great conversations about art and about life so I thought it would be um, a wise thing to maybe put some of this to the quote-unquote tape. So here is the first episode. Thanks for listening. Welcome to the podcast. So I'm here with my friend and uh, fellow artist, Dan. I feel, now I already feel bad because I don't know how to pronounce your last name. Nopen. Nopen. Dan Nopen. Um, and Dan is from the Netherlands and we're here at uh, the Art House Holland in near Leiden doing the artist residency. But that being said, I'm going to let you introduce yourself for a second and just what, who you are and what you do. Uh, thanks so much, John, for having me, for inviting me for this podcast. Um, I'm honored. Um, yes, yeah, small introduction. Um, I'm a visual artist. My, my work is... I started drawing, mainly. Um, moved on to painting a lot, oil paint. And it's mainly figurative work. I guess, um, well, I relate a lot to your work. It's... Um, it's definitely mainly figurative stuff. There's obviously like um, a lot of other stuff that's in there that we we will probably talk about. But um, yeah, I guess that's a short introduction for me. And but initially, what I didn't know until coming here is your background though is in graphic design. Yeah, yeah, a bit wider than that. I I I studied design. Um, it was a department that was a lot to do with fashion and interior design. There was a lot of women there, actually. I was one of the first guys. <laughs> the the only guys? The only yeah. guy in the that was funny breaking ground. You're breaking ground. I actually wanted to do a completely, which I joined in the beginning, completely different direction, which was more like automotive design. Okay. It's one of these ideas you, you have in your head and then you figure out what it's really about and then you're like, uh, that's not for me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like art. So I was just looking at this department when they were, literally when they were doing their um, assessment 
with the with the head of the department and it was called men and identity at the time mm -hmm. and there was just girls there and um i remember um clearly the, uh, the head uh, of Moritz, he's, he's a german guy so he he designs uh fabrics like the, from the texture to the patterns and really amazing guy right? it's really amazing stuff but he was saying like Kind Jungs, kind Jungs. So I was, I was about to, you know, have a look. So, so he was pretty clear about that it was actually only for girls as well at the time. <laughs> what was he saying? Sorry, that's German, of course. So, no boys, no boys, please. <laughs> <laughs> that was so that was my first introduction. But uh, soon after me, like a lot of guys um, joined. So, so yeah. that's interesting. Is that? I don't know if this is a stupid question, but with him saying like no boys, is that? Always, has that been a kind of a cultural thing up until now that that was a thing for women? Um, I, I feel almost like it definitely my generation sort of changed that where it was like yeah, it was mostly girls involved in that kind of stuff you know fashion or I, I feel like in my generation things really like started shifting and especially where it was not anymore like you would be in a specific industry or a specific you know people right. are doing cross-border whether it was i i started tapping into architecture interior design so many other things and even now now when we have this discussion okay we're we're currently artists no i mean in the non how would you say that in english so in the non-applied sense Mm -hmm. But I feel almost the applied arts are really tapping into whatever. There's, I feel there's hardly any borders anymore. And I think yeah, yeah. My, in my, when my generation started, at least in, in college, it was like people were trying to, to make holes through those barriers, at least. No? So stepping oh, okay. over into another. Yeah. yeah. But prior to that, it wasn't like that. Like I felt it was very rigid, yeah, was very, very divided. And in the stereotype, I mean, obviously, you know, so there were... The only guys that were there at the time were, uh, was I think two two gay, gay boys. So mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, that totally shifted. Yeah. Man, so that's what you went to school for, and you worked professionally. Uh yeah, okay. yeah. So it was more design. rather than graphic design. It was more yeah. So it was called identity, and um, it was not necessarily just to do with um, fashion fabrics, but interior was definitely part of it and it started to become more conceptual in that sense so thinking about brands or the identity as in you know to use that in the sense of um, design for anything because um, mm -hmm. i graduated with a short film and a interior architecture project yeah. oh you did a short film project yeah yeah what was that um it was basically because that whole digital wave was coming up, digital mm -hmm. photography, digital video. And I thought it was great to use that new medium um, in a design sense for expressing identity about a brand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So more, I, I guess it turned out to be a mood film. So it's something that's more common, common now, I guess, but um, yeah. But it was not at all common to graduate with a short film. No. Oh, okay. So, I think it's yeah, ever since it's been pushing boundaries and doing uh, different things. I guess the the students. I mean, like um, it became a very conceptual um, design school in the end. Uh huh. Yeah. And what was the school? Uh, design Academy design in Academy. Eindhoven, it's in the south of oh, the country. Yeah, Eindhoven. Um, so when we did the workshop, and we'll get into that for um, 1606 a couple of weeks ago, one of the guys came from Eindhoven, yeah. Eindhoven, Eindhoven yeah. Yeah. and said it is the design capital of the Netherlands. Yeah, and I, and, and and yeah, I think the ambition goes further than that even. But sure, yeah, totally. How do you mean? How does it go further? Well, I, uh, I think it was pretty impressive. I think it was Lida by Edelkort at the time when she became director there that she really started pushing um, the Academy worldwide as a brand. And also, 
a statement about design, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, you know, students started to go to um, Salon di Mobili in, in, in Italy to show their work. You know? So it was really mm -hmm. also about spreading ideas and instead of just a school where you would learn um, design as a trade. I think it, yeah, a lot, a lot happened in those. Uh, Elaborate more, what do you mean on, um, you were saying spreading ideas? I think it was one of the first academies um, that started to think like that conceptually about design. So, oh, okay. cross-border, definitely, and... Um, so meaning like more more than function, design more yeah, than exactly. function? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, vehicle for many other things. Um, yeah, I slowly moved away from that. So I definitely started in applied arts and I started a studio after that, which was a lot to do, like like you said, with graphic design and branding for companies. Slowly moved into photography and film after that and then just decided to um, make personal work only. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, we talked about you did photography quite a bit. And I thought it was interesting because I was looking through your website um, I've looked through it before, but just to catch up before this, and it still talks more about, um, I don't know if it's an update issue, but your emphasis is on photography and drawing. Is that still Yeah, that, that's one I have to change, man. <laughs> oh, okay. I would say now that it's about <laughs> drawing and painting. And then, drawing and painting. Um, big emphasis on painting. Yeah, it's, it's a big exploration right now. It's How did big. that... Because that's interesting, because I feel like for me it's a little backwards i guess in a sense because i find myself wanting to head towards those things now more like film and, and such and design ah. and you came from that and now you're you're into painting you've been drawing for a long while and then into painting like how how did that happen like what's the relationship between your design background how did that translate I mean, you did a little bit of film. How did that translate or transfer into drawing and then eventually painting? Like, why? And photography. What's the bridge between those for you? Because well, for me, they're, they're very different, and I can't make a bridge between them. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they lead mm -hmm. one into another. Yeah, I guess that is something that definitely came out of that kind of thinking that we were just talking about, because it's like, okay, so you can look at photography and film as it is a... A trade or how would you call it like a, a, a specific thing you learn how to do technically correct and then um, work in that industry but to me I didn't see much of a difference anymore between photography and film other than that you could it, it means something different technically but because that's that's what happened right when everything became digital you could say okay so with one second of video I have 25 frames that are still photographs right you know? so, it's photograph. so that immediately blended in my head where it was like more thinking about the image rather than the technical side behind it and mm. I guess for me it was as simple as in I loved to work with lighting and how things can look uh, in the sense of a photograph not photographically but I also felt at some point that the technical side was really getting in between. Mm -hmm. So literally, I, I guess you could say the camera between what I wanted to express and, and what I was doing. So, and especially with film, which is in that sense a big difference to photography because the amount of resources that it, that it takes to make a film, that I just started to get a problem with that. Really. Yeah, and it's really film is a collaborative Thing in the end right sure. yeah the resources the people you need yeah so and it's a great process I mean um, I work with people in film um, on, on many aspects or so in the production and also afterwards post-production so compositing I guess that's to answer your question a bit that's sort of where it started so I felt very comfortable in the compositing part so you do the production, you have all this material, and then you can sort of, you start, I mean, that's still how I use it now. For me, Photoshop is like sketching. So mm. 
I will have some photographs and maybe I will even put them together or grab something from somebody else or somewhere else and sort of try things uh, as a fourth stage or a pre-stage to what I would want to paint or draw. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say real quick too that people are going to probably hear doors shutting <laughs> and oh. people talking in the background. <laughs> We're all living in a house together and uh, that's just part and parcel to the situation we're in, so uh, <laughs> I apologize in advance. Um, Farm doors. And it, so how long did, after that, how long were you focusing on drawing? Um, and was there a bleed over? So like, okay, so I'm understanding how they lead into each other, but when you started doing the drawings, were you still doing photographs? And not meaning just photographing the models for your drawings, but were you still doing photography concurrently with drawing? Like yeah. One, there was hard cuts into the other, and how long were you just drawing? Because your drawings are made. Like I, I'd seen your drawings before, but now seeing them in person, especially some of the ones like the apartment are phenomenal, Thank and the know. scale, the technique, and everything is so amazing. And it seems like one of those things. It's interesting to me because I'm like, man, to draw like that, it would you'd have to be doing it your whole life. And it kind of seems like you're like, okay, I'm gonna do photography. Okay, now I'm gonna move into drawing. And I'm just going to kick ass at all these things. Like, what? Um, yeah, you know my question. Yeah, well, it's it funny the last bit you were mentioning because that, that's something that struggles in my head a lot. Like, sometimes I feel I'm doing too many things. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess that's it. That, <laughs> yeah, you know, and then when, you f when do you fruit of them, you know? Yeah, yeah. If, I guess if you do something for 20 years really intensely and well and then that's going to start to pay off at some point. No, I always feel like I pull out too quickly. <laughs> um, right. but, but that is what I, I remember doing that with drawing though, really making that decision like, okay, let's do something really well and focus on that. And how long did you focus on it? I mean, you're still I, doing them, but what was the... Yeah, I like, started drawing, I guess, intensively in 2015. It's really only been four years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You talented and, bastard. And <laughs> well, I I, I did a bit of drawing before that, but then it's like making a couple of drawings a year, so it doesn't really make. That's not really. Making Were they bigger ones? Because yeah, some of your drawings are pretty large scale. Yeah, yeah. That's also where I guess what in the end pushed me to start painting because it it kind of becomes this impossible thing where you spend like two three hundred hours on a drawing. Mm -hmm. So it's not even scalable, you know, like if you want to make a living at some point, <coughs> because I had the luxury back then to answer your other question to phase one thing out and start the other one kind of smoothly. I mean, like I, I, I was running a studio, a design studio, and then with my partner who basically made it into the company that it is now, which is much more a software company and, mm -hmm. um, I, I basically stepped out of that and kept on freelancing so I could build that down, which was where I still was doing commercial photography and stuff like that. So um, I also had the luxury of really making what I wanted to make and, and, and not think so much about is this going to sell or find your voice, I guess, you know, yeah. find your style. Um, and, it, and so I. Yeah, that was that was 2008. Um, but yeah, that was so minimal. But I really made that decision in 2015 to jump and to to intensively start to draw. And that's a big difference. I would say that to everybody who even wants to like do something. I guess it's for everything. But someone once said to me, "Okay, you know, just start drawing 15 or 20 minutes a day." Yeah, and you will not believe what happened. So, yeah, because doing doing some is far better than doing none, right? I mean, it applies to anything. Like, and and that repetition. So instead of yeah. doing it one day a week for eight hours, you it it has a bigger impact doing it for twenty minutes. Short bursts. Or... Yeah, yeah, consistency. Yeah, yeah, because too much time will elapse between that one eight hour. I remember that in school, the painters would do that, like work 12 hours on a Sunday and then that means they thought they can take five days off but it's like that um the story of the tortoise and the hare like you're you're much better off to paint for an hour or two a day every day than 12 hours one day a week yeah were, were you able to quickly be 
were you quickly able to sort of paint for a lot of hours a day or no. did you have to build it up? I built it up and I can still remember the day that I felt like a very, it was a very noticeable click in my brain when I was able to go long. And it was, I was living in Oakland, I was in my apartment and I, I had a max, and this is pre-internet almost, so I could only had a concentration of about two hours and then I would get antsy, I would be social. And I remember one day passing that two hour mark into the three, into the four, and I worked for like seven hours straight. Right. And, that, and it was that drastic of a change. And like, I felt it in my brain, like, oh, okay, this is what it means to really work at something, you know? And then, yeah, it's been the same ever since. Um, Funny, yeah, because I, I think it's something people don't get right away. You know, it's almost like reprogramming yourself to be, to be doing to be doing that and even then I mean people think if, if you're an artist that's what you do all day but then there's so much else yeah yeah for <laughs> sure yeah yeah no it quite literally is reprogramming the brain I think um man I had a bunch of thoughts going while you were talking why um so one thing that was your it seems like your background because you're using these marketing terms brand and you did commercial photography yeah does yeah. that were you trying to get away from that? Does that yeah. bleed into your work now? Well, for me, I think that because you were saying you just started 215. I, so I, I, I did when in 2008, I did two years in a row, quite a few residencies. And mm -hmm. this was like nothing really concrete as an artist. Cause for me, it was just searching whatever. So I did very different things. But for me, the most in difficult thing was to shake that off. Because it's like... The commercial... Yeah. What, the, the mentality or Yeah, the, like okay. it's applied. So you're trying to come up with a creative idea for somebody else. And now it's like tapping into yourself, you know? Is so that what, what kept what, you going on that path then? Or are you like, man, this is, this is much more fulfilling to you as a person to not come up with ideas for somebody else? Um, I, ca I kind of started to feel frustrated by it because... Uh, I was less able to adapt. That's why I stopped doing it also, I guess. Because maybe otherwise I would have continued. Mm. Yeah, okay. But definitely less fulfilling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I had these ideas about how I wanted certain things to look and there was no place for that in, yeah, something like advertising or branding. Oh, okay, I see. So you almost felt like you had to. Oh, so you had these ideas that wouldn't fit into this other world you're working in. Yeah, I guess at so. the time I was not, not so much thinking about, hey, there's really something I have to say. I don't think I was in that space yet. But your ideas were more fine art oriented, maybe, than they are Style commercial. Style-wise, uh, yeah, I, yeah I, definitely, yeah. And, sorry, some of my questions, I've, I'm trying to like let things flow organically, but I know there's certain questions that yeah, people yeah. are interested in. So then like at this time, then who, what artists were influencing you? during the turnover well i guess uh i mean and i should say like we're i, I kind of i'll do a, a proper intro but we're in leiden which is the birthplace of rembrandt yeah yeah, yeah. which is known for is, is that it is were, were you it was the history here influencing you of fine art or were you looking out elsewhere who were the people yeah, that it's were... funny because there's a big um disconnection somehow with that in my brain because because it's always i always loved sheila egon sheila and and klimt no it's almost one thing for me uh -huh. those two persons but i think the thing that really started pulling me uh when i was making that or trying to make that jump was a lot of stuff in game art really yeah so concept artists yeah concept art yeah uh, also the way they were painting uh, I think it was digital already then yeah um, do you I do would, any digital I, painting? I, I, I'm just picking it up now oh, okay yeah because that was no that didn't feel natural at the time yeah I don't know I grabbed a pencil and that was the closest thing I could find I guess yeah because it took me a long time. I mean, I'm looking at your work and it's so expressive. But to be that expressive, I think that's one of the things that took me the longest. Because I always tend to 
the do the comforting thing for me, which is like work really neatly. Yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. it's keeping control or something. So, yeah, I, I yeah, it, it is definitely control because to get outside of your comfort zone, you not, you do have to let go of control, and that's a scary thing, especially if you're very precious. Yeah, about your artwork. Well, that's that's a good word because I think that's a corner I put myself into after drawing so many years. Uh huh. Because you put so many hours in it drawing, mm -hmm. yeah, you don't you stop taking risks, yeah, or you try to avoid them, and so the, the drawings become very refined and very. Um, but it's not like you would do something like that on a morning, you know, have a huge brush and make this stroke. Yeah. yeah. Though I felt that was what I uh, needed to do at some point. Okay. Really? So back then you even gravitate, like thinking in the back of your head that you're going to lose this, these 200 hours of photorealism, basically, and you want to move into something more expressive? Yeah, but I had okay. no idea how. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. And it's funny, it's really bizarre, actually, because if I, I went to see my partner the other day, we, we have a lot of contacts still, so my business partner and he has one of my drawings hang, hanging in his office and it's it's this portrait of Ai Weiwei so oh, okay it's, and it's it's really big actually it's like I guess a meter and a half high and 60 70 centimeters wide uh -huh. and it's done with pencil but it's actually quite expressive I mean if you look at the beard it's kind of is it on your website yeah yeah what, what year? Uh, I'm, I'm looking at his website maybe, right now. Maybe there's still one. 2014? The, no, the one before. Here? Yeah. If, okay. If you... Man, these are cool. Um, if, I don't know how to scroll through. Can you scroll the other side? Oh, oh cool. Uh, so... No. Oh. Hi. Hi. It's yeah. not really working nicely. <laughs> oh, wrong? There's, oh, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> uh, okay, nice, nice, nice. Yeah, that is more expressive. So it's kind of bizarre for me because when I saw that, I was like, oh, from there I kind of went more realistic, more refined. So there was already that expressiveness a bit, uh -huh. but I kind of went the other way. So, so for me now, deciding to paint is because I last thing I want to do is like make a painting that will feel like what I was doing when I was drawing because I feel for me it's a vehicle to to find that so my paintings will I want them to be different than my drawings right yeah do you see it as like a I, I, man I'm so worried about using pretentious terms <laughs> on a <laughs> podcast I'll blame that on some friends of mine, the waiting to dry guys. Um, it, it, is it a completely like, because I think of mediums as like a vocabulary. Like I remember reading like for like graphite, I think it was, um, you know, the painter Antonio Lopez Garcia, the yeah, Spanish yeah, yeah. painter. He, he had a thing where he said like his drawings or drawing in general, he sees as uh, more psychological. And it, one is because it's naturally in black and white, but also there's something about the medium. And then he sees painting as something that's closer to life and just more descriptive, not as psychological. And there's arguments you can make on either side, supporting or disagreeing. But to me, that translates into like, oh, it's a different vocabulary or it's a different language that you can express different things. You yeah. Know, they're separate from each other. Is that how you're seeing it? The same way or? Yeah, though I, I kind of feel I totally use it the wrong way. Also, <laughs> what painting? Well, I mean, why would you make a drawing that's like that that big and that's that labor intensive? You know, because I don't know. They, I'm looking at that picture of you like this with the I know so the <laughs> giant head and a pencil. I guess it gives it, me anxiety. Yeah, that's a lot of hours, man. Yeah. So I guess it it brought me something because I went really deep, like in the sense of trying to master the medium. Okay. But also, at, at some point, I just felt that it didn't make any sense to try. Okay, that's where I want to get, because you just said something that she's like, why, you just questioned yourself, like, why would you do that? Yeah. Why, why did you, <laughs> why did you do that? And what, what made you change your mind? 
Because obviously, if you're going to put 200 hours into it, you justified it in your head. You're like, okay, I'm going to do this. Well, I wouldn't. I didn't know how to do it otherwise because I didn't <laughs> know how to paint. Yeah. And I just, I just love monumental works. Okay. So that was and, the first. And thing. that I set on doing that, you know. But, and it's funny. All my friends were like, "Why? Why do you have to make these big works? Just make some nice small drawings." And I was like, "No, man, I have to do this." But yeah, so you know, I, I, yeah, I, I, I. I use the, the wrong tools for it not really though i mean there's no wrong tools right I mean, well it turned out interestingly because uh i think it was 2015 <coughs> excuse me boom magazine pick, picked up a few drawings i made and uh -huh. beautiful bizarre and and uh, i f i think also because it was so out of the ordinary because yeah, yeah. people weren't doing that like making those big drawings yeah. I, 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 one or two people then were doing it so i mean now you see it a lot more but so i guess we could yeah it kind of brought something <laughs> i love the idea that you just didn't know any other way to do it like oh, i just use a pencil yeah so that so then it. i mean is it is there anything more to it? like why now um i'm i guess i'm kind of fishing to see if there's other influences that make you question why I do this anymore you know things like the obvious ones are, you know people work faster now and i think a lot of that and i really want to avoid talking about social media as much as possible but because of the internet and stuff people work faster like were there any outside influences or sometimes in people's life you know i have a busy life so i have to pay quickly you know things like that well i mean i mean i obviously especially um Claire, my girlfriend, really strong on that. At some point, you also obviously have to think about, okay, I want to do this full time, so I, I should make, start thinking about how to make a living with this. So, and then... Uh, so, that, pragmatic. There is very yeah. practical... I wouldn't say that's really, that was really the decision, but um, because I, it's, it's incredible how much faster you start to become if you draw so much. Like, if I compare yeah. to what I was able to draw back then and now that's like a huge difference but um yeah the scalability you know it's in the sense of sorry scalability in the sense of yeah how much can i produce and you you cannot ask like ten thousand euros for drawing because you put so many hours in it you know yeah, yeah. that doesn't work like that so right. but that was not the motivation for me to start painting was like what we talked about before it's to find a new vehicle in which I was being able to really become expressive again. Uh -huh. And then I was starting to get frustrated with drawing because I would hang my drawing sometimes on a group exhibition and I would see these paintings and I'm like, holy fuck man, that intensity of color and texture, I cannot achieve that with my pencil. So... Oh, okay, so you're feeling limited. Yeah. And, okay. Because I was putting emotions and certain intensities in a pencil drawing but it was so minimalistic that if you would enter a room and you would see the drawing hanging on the wall how much you know i was asking myself question how much of that is actually translated to to the person seeing that you know it, wouldn't there be another way of um, a much more powerful way to do that so yeah and i felt that so often with paintings that I would see that it was much more uh, that the ability to communicate and be expressive yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I agree I agree I mean drawing has graphite has or drawing in general has its own thing but I think the limitations are nice but nothing beats oil paint at the end of the day yeah I believe you man um, <laughs> so I want to move on a couple things like first and, and this may be too forced to even ask it this way but I, I find it fascinating that and this could just be your background but you're using like I said pointed out before like a lot of marketing terms and obviously that's your background my experience I've been in Europe for two years and one of the most refreshing things to me is there's hardly any talk of marketing it's all almost all about art People are still trying to figure out how to get their art there and make money at it. But the, the crux of the conversation revolves around art making, art ideas, which my experience in the U.S. is it's completely flipped. We talk so much about marketing and, you know, all that stuff, the terms branding and yada yada. Um, do, you, do you find that 
well, you haven't been to the U.S., but you've talked to a lot of Americans. Is there an emphasis on that here? Or is that just your background? Like, how do you see Europeans and maybe even just the Dutch in general? Is there a push for marketing? Is that at the forefront or is the art definitely a uh, first? I would say, especially in this country, definitely not. Yeah. And in art... <laughs> is that good or bad? <laughs> in art, it's like... I don't know. In, I guess in art, it's really like even ugly to go that direction. People were able to put off people and they... Yeah. I think it's our generation totally changing that, but... Um, There's definitely a generational component. But I, I told you like a story I had like the first time moving to Paris. Um, in the, in the, we, my girlfriend and I were in our studio and I had lunch with an artist I just met. And all he was talking about was his ideas and the emotion of painting and all this stuff. Not once did he bring up, even say the word Instagram or things like that. And to me, it was such a refreshing and maybe overly romantic view. And so my, right, right, right. my American eyes are like, I see that now. I see Europe through those glasses. So I don't know if that's just me being naive or if you think actually European or Europe in general is less on that marketing end than America is. What does it even matter? I, I, I would say yes. But, it, but then it's also some stuff you can't deny. I mean, you're, you're living in Paris right now, right? Yeah. If you, if you walk just across that bridge that takes you from the Notre Dame to, um, yeah, over the water, just to the direction of uh, the Jewish neighborhood. Um, Le Marais? Yeah, Le Marais, yeah. thanks. Yeah. It's, there's so much culture, there's so much of that, that, that romantic idea of art that sort of you walk through literally. And I, yeah. Well, maybe you cross McDonald's, I don't know. But to me, there's it, one there. It, I, I, use the, <laughs> I use the Wi Fi. <laughs> okay, if I'm there, it, 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 that stuff doesn't cross my mind. I don't know. Yeah. To me, it's still very separate things, by the way, because it, I, would, I would switch to. You know, if I'm in the studio, I'm not thinking about uh, what am I going to make that's going to be good for a brand or my brand. Or right. It's, well, and it goes back to what you were saying earlier. That's the reason you got out of that life yeah. for years anyways. Yeah. So. I mean, if it has to go back to that, really, that I'm going to start to think about what is going to sell, mm -hmm. then I better go back to what I was doing. Yeah. Because, you know... The art world is quite... Because it was better money. <laughs> exactly. <It's laughs> a better paycheck. Don't try yeah. to find it here. No. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay, so that I think is a good segue then into what we're doing here and what you guys are doing. Because it... Um, not that the marketing thing, because it is... You guys are... With the Art House and with the 1606, um, there's a very refreshing business side to it that you guys are pushing, to me, to where it's not this... Um, I, don't know, I don't know how to explain it. Let's just go into that. Like what, yeah, what sure. you, you knowing Daniel Martin, how did this evolve and what is it that we're doing right now, this inaugural project 1606? Yeah, it's funny because for him it started really like how we found, well, how we found each other by sending like a message on Instagram like, hey, mm -hmm. I like your work. Uh, let's have a beer. Sliding into the DMs. Yeah. <laughs> And he, he had this idea at one point, if I know four people in a city that respond, that want to do a beer, I'll just fly out uh -huh. and, and go. For him, it was at the time searching a lot. Like he, he came to a point where he was stuck in his atelier, like where to develop next, where to go next. And he would start talking to other artists and find out one, everybody's dealing with the same stuff. But also like, interesting. he was finding out that, you know, it's so interesting to start doing stuff together and that's yeah. the same with with Santiago um, and yeah and so let's say we'll throw it out there because it'll be on other podcasts so Danny Martin is a painter that most people should know is who who's helped start 1606 one of the yeah. co-founders with uh, man I'm already forget Santi's name Santiago name. Pani Santiago Pani is yeah. a friend of yours and you guys are all working together on this yeah because okay. he he pointed that out most clearly he was saying because he really looked into it in history. I mean, like examples of people that pulled it off on their own, and they're just pulled what off? Because a lot of people probably don't know what you're talking well, about. Well, it's like obviously everybody's trying to that series about artists trying to make an art career, 
Right. So really make a punch. Like through stand- community? You're trying to make that a career through community? Is that the idea? I guess it's maybe also the stuff that we look at, right? I mean, well, it's literally when I found your work uh, first, I mean, I showed it to you on my Pinterest board, which is quite old. But I mean, <laughs> your work Thanks. is in there. And I mean, at some point, you know, when you start out, you, the first thing you ask yourself is like, okay, I want to do this, you know, I want to make this into a career. And how am I going to get to that place, you know, mm-hmm. that people will yeah. find my work inspiring and they're you want to be part of that list, you know? Right, right. Um, sounds weird I'm saying it like that, but I felt no, no, it like that. It makes that. sense. Yeah. Okay. So that's when you guys got together and decided to do this. That was part of the the motivation behind it was connecting to other artists and then to learn from each other yeah. and motivate each other. Yeah, we found out very quickly okay. like what you share, it's, it's literally like one plus one is three. I mean, it's so multidimensional ah uh, gotcha okay it's so enriching and then yeah there's so much stuff you know like that other people are much better at than you so you can really really help each other as well you know? oh nice it's funny because as soon as you said multidimensional I'm like man I forgot he has a background in physics I didn't even talk about <laughs> that you're so multi-level well yeah that's another <laughs> thing I mean I love painting man but I would eventually want to really go beyond that and i don't know i would love to have that people can walk into this little universe so that yeah. so that goes beyond drawings and paintings you know i mean if i look at what falter one of the other artists that's here currently with you guys um t- to make sculptures you know to get in that realm yeah I yeah just, i just have too many stuff i like man <laughs> too many ideas and too little days so okay so the three of you guys uh, eventually got together and have this idea for the project 1606. Now there's three components. You have the Art House Holland, Project 1606, and the plant. What are the different <laughs> And I know we already yeah. talked about like there was too much branding, so you had to uh, reduce the size of that umbrella. But what are the three separations? What are those things in and of yeah, themselves? Yeah, I think it's more like a legacy thing because Art House Holland, it's super confusing, I know. It, yeah. Art House Holland was there first, Right, so then that Art House Holland is the residency program. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and you, they've That's been doing it for now. like three years? Yeah, and before that, okay. uh, another three years in Madrid, so altogether six years. Oh, six years, okay. And basically, we the plant is the three of us, our atelier, and it's okay, like we're kind of like the permanent residents here. <laughs> right, yeah. Next to the guys that come one or three months. Uh-huh, okay. And then 1606 is... is that project that you know when we came up like wouldn't it be great to try and get a few people of those lists you know the yeah. list the people that we admire and try to get them here and 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 work for a month so okay so 1606 is more or less a subsidy of art house holland that was your personal residency that you guys created yeah with under the umbrella of our house yeah holland. i mean okay, we have cool. a lot of fun artists coming here but we imagined wouldn't it be great for one month in the year to have these really really inspire at least what we think are the most inspiring artists we can think of and have them here. Wow. thanks yeah. man thanks for the invite but yeah. now, now i feel thanks bad for coming I'm, over, like, man. I'm like i don't know i feel like i haven't lived up to that i didn't know that was the idea to have these inspiring artists i'm like man i feel like i've just been complaining and not working hard enough it's been a, it's been amazing man so far i i'm no it's, it's been, been a awesome. knockoff for the last two weeks or see what's to come but I can't believe it's already been two weeks but so what, what's I've been wondering I didn't even ask anyone yet what's the 1606 where does that it's from? the birth year of Rembrandt oh yeah. shit now I'm embarrassed okay that's no, well, awesome. I mean, that's so, super cool okay what a gr- uh, great title and we just thought it was nice because it, <coughs> that has that reference to what you were talking about before uh-huh. you can't deny it you know yeah 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 that's what we build on but we wanted to have something that you could totally charge again. No, it's not something that everybody will know immediately or think about. So okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's beautiful, man. I like that. And then um, with the residency itself, residency itself, it's been um, 
it loosely defined. Like we came into this with no strict parameters. Yeah. And was that the idea for you guys or how much of this, let's be completely transparent. How much of this was uh, figuring it out as we go along? Like you guys had a set idea like, okay, we're going to invite artists here. We're going to do this. They were, well, we were all, 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 also like, what are we going to tell these guys? <laughs> you know, <laughs> so we have to do this. <laughs> And then I also remember that's doing what, a few oh, art right. residencies and there was so much stuff that was planned and uh -huh. people were, we're going to go to this exhibition, do this and do that. And it just felt too much. Like yeah. I, I wasn't even able to get to the point where I wanted to feel where I was, react to it in a painting or a drawing. So right. that was another thought. Yeah. yeah, it almost feels like art camp or something. Like you got to do these activities. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> okay. Um, and so, and as we're like now, like that we're at this two week mark, there's now we're hitting this point where there's a lot of talk. Like we're, we're collaborating with, well, I say we I'm, as a resident, but you guys as business partners, permanent residents, um, collaborating with Paint Guide. And there's these ideas of expanding out digitally. In fact, it, to me, it seems like there's a lot of emphasis on, on um, social media and, and communicating digitally. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Was that part of the intention from the beginning? Because we're doing like Instagram live things. We're gonna, there's going to be a live seminar. Um, the podcast wasn't part of the initial plan, but it was for me. Like, were these things there from the beginning as you guys were... Uh, brainstorming about what to do with residency. Yeah, we totally feel that's uh, a big vehicle. Okay. Like, you know, the stories, I mean, you're in it right now. So what we experience here to share that with other people, I think, I think that would interest me if I wouldn't be able to physically be here to at least sort of um, get a, get a, sense of that yeah 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 i think those stories are really interesting you know when it's like exactly what we're doing now this conversation where you exchange and you know you you give me an insight in how how you look into the world and to uh, to add that visual aspect to that that we nowadays can on social media i think yeah that that gives me so much looking at stuff uh, you know, so that's uh, something you want to give back to other people yeah, I, I think that's just so valuable uh, with what we're capable of doing now with social media, at least for me. So, yeah. Yeah. And we just, that's where we started. But we then, we did this small event, sketch uh, sketch event in this summer here. And it was the first tryout, literally, because we believe in the strength of both. So, online and offline. Mm-hmm. And Offline would be an example like the in-person workshops, like things like that. Yeah, or, okay. or literally, you know, your project here now. Oh, okay, okay, I see. Because yeah. Paint Guide was also looking for that partner to to have a physical thing somewhere, you know, happening really oh, where you get I see. together. Okay, I didn't know that because they don't have that for themselves. So that's kind of their tie into this is now they are vicariously have a brick and mortar, so to speak. Yeah, which would be exactly. No, exactly. Oh, okay. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and Santi, so, sorry, Santiago has um, great ambitions for that. I mean, he's already setting up one other hub in Mexico, because that's the dream eventually to have all these, not necessarily ours, but I mean to have these hubs around the world. I mean, Walter's thinking about doing one. Yeah, <laughs> Walter's got his workshop. It's funny. I, every time I hear this now, I remember because Andrew. He was saying, he was jokingly saying he feels like he's joining an art cult. <laughs> <laughs> so I just think with these different locations, it sounds like an artistic version of Scientology or something that you guys are mapping out. But no, that's amazing. And so then the idea would be you would be doing it in these locations, uh, residencies in each one. Yeah. 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 And I mean, it, not, not even necessarily a residency, but it more like a, a creative hub where you can go okay. to. And, and I like that. And, and do your thing. Yeah, whatever your thing is. Yeah, I mean, sure. No, but literally, like, let's say you want to go to a place for a few days, have a certain experience. Yeah. And I think it's so great if you would have these hubs around the world that function like that. And yeah. 
Have you guys, um, among the different artists, well, not for this project since we're the first, but you've been around with the Art House Hall, and, and I'm wondering what you guys would think too, like moving forward, is this something open to only painters and sculptors or like, have you guys thought about working with filmmakers or, or even, I, I don't know if a musician would be like, I'd think more of like, like sound creators and stuff like no, that. No, they have that, been, yeah. This really? This summer there was a DJ. Um, he plays at a lot of festivals, but he was working on his own material. Oh, that's cool. And, and that's something you guys would, would consider in the 1606. Are you guys going to move forward with that title, by the way? Sorry, I keep no, saying No, that's it. something Is that dead? So, no, I mean, I just explained it. How come? Why it's so complicated? Yeah, yeah. No, but we should come up with a solution for that. So I don't oh, okay. know what, the, what that solution is going to be, though. Okay, okay. <laughs> but that's something you guys would consider for this residency that we're. I doing. think it would be great to do this once every year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But having different disciplines, like you're totally, to, yeah, totally. Um, yeah. Poets and writers and yeah. musicians. Yeah, we had a writer here last year at the normal residency. I I just think it's. Yeah, that, yeah, man, of course. I yeah. feel that. So that's cool. Yeah, I'm a lot sorry. around it, and I don't think people <laughs> understand what it um, is. So this, you know, it, uh, I love live drawing. And sometimes mm -hmm. you have the, you know, you have a live model, but uh, a lot of times you don't, or you can't afford it. And there is this uh, subreddit called Gone Wild, and there's even a few other ones that gone are wild, yeah. Are yeah. Gone Wild? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's it. Um, and people are, so people post um, erotic or to an extent uh, even pornographic pictures of themselves. Selfie, right. uh, yeah, pornographic selfies. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they even post like really good photographic material. And I, at some point, was like, wow, you know, for a morning sketch to start working, that was great material to sort of warm up. Mm -hmm. um, but I felt like using an image that is, not made by me or not even you know owned by me i should ask for permission so i started using these images and started talking to the people who made them and they thought it was great that i was using the images to sketch and they were super interested in in even seeing the result and we started with some of them i had this really amazing dialogues and so it was just a back and forth between you and the person yeah. initially okay. and some people would even send me images that they wouldn't put on um and this slowly sort of started to become this project where I was really just drawing those images from, from Reddit and I felt like it was becoming a project. Even to where I think now it could be like a really interesting thing for a book. Mm -hmm. that I want to do. Yeah, absolutely good. Um, yeah, that's sort of in a nutshell what the project is about. I don't know, this, this may be kind of a stupid question, but... What I found kind of interesting is when I'm going through, so you're looking through these, these drawings and, and I mean, like the first one or two, it just looks like a nude with a slightly erotic pose. And then there's one of a girl that's got like, she's almost fisting herself. She's got yeah. four fingers yeah. deep in her vagina. But then amongst all these, there's a gigantic heart on. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, I, I thought it was great because you're, you're not... You weren't selective. Like, I think anyone who, a, a male that would go on this, you know, as always talk about the male gaze, like, would just stick to the females as a comfort level. Um, yeah, sure. I'm you know, sure. and then initially I didn't want to ask. Here's, here, this exposes my comfort level. Because I, I didn't know, like, I, I didn't know where the pictures came from when I was watching them. So I didn't know if this was a project between you and Claire. And so then I'm looking at that heart. I'm like, okay, that's Dan's <laughs> unit. Do I ask? Like, what do I... <laughs> I don't know yeah, what to say about eyes. your boner, man. <laughs> no, it's it's from a Norwegian guy. It's so not, th that's know. interesting. So there's no for I, because I mean I don't know. I don't want to say it's just a cultural thing, but I feel most just we'll just put the culture thing aside. Like men wouldn't do that. I mean it, it has such like homoerotic implications, you know, thing like that. What right? What why did you draw that? Why why did you use that as subject matter? Well, for me, it was literally because of going on about what I said before, I used to censor myself so much. Mm -hmm. And right now, I guess in the beginning, I was making these drawings for myself. So I wasn't even gonna show them to anybody. 
-hmm. So within that mindset, I decided to to draw the stuff that I would most opposed to, I guess. Oh, okay. When, when you look at it from that censoring point of view. And then it's what you were saying. Like, so, okay, you can draw a nude woman and then you, you it's hard to say whether it's erotic or even pornographic compared mm -hmm. to a, an erection, which is obviously clear, you know, when it's, it's pretty clear. Space. It's clear as it gets. Um, and that's, you know, so I st would start looking for things that, that I would just want to try out. And... Um, that was definitely one that I never done before, and uh, I was like, "Yeah, man, that's something I have to try." Yeah, and and is this because it's so different from your other work? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Is this something that you're gonna keep pursuing? Is this like a side project? Is this something you want want to be the, your main focus? Like you as an artist, where where do you see this fitting in in your body of work? Is this the thing you want yeah. to be known for? No, that's the thing. Uh, um, I mean, for me, it was already pretty uh, exciting to even put it on that exhibition because, yeah. like I said before, is that I the just, first time you'd shown? Yeah, this? yeah. Because wow. For me, it was just something I would keep in a box, and I was it's my you personal. You were so calm at that opening. <laughs> I would be a bundle of nerves. I'm a bundle of nerves, like showing any new work. But if I was showing that work, it's funny because I think it's in the end gonna be that a side project. Uh huh. Because I just felt for such a long time that I wanted to draw stuff like that. And I just, at some, Claire was saying that, just go and do that stuff. It seems like you have to go through that and find something that's behind there. Yeah. And it's for me, the, the thing I guess most is about how liberating that project has been. Mm -hmm. So also finding out that it's probably not go really going to, come back literally in any of my uh, other work. So I guess it's going to be that project on its own. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that's fine. So I felt like it was something I really had to go through. Um, so maybe maybe the implications are completely philosophical or uh, psychological, as you say. But Both, I, as I say, yeah, psychological and philosophical. Um, especially, like I said, I mean, for me, it's saying... Uh, a straight male drawing yeah homoerotic well i mean yeah i had an interesting conversation with this guy he, he at some point he was checking out whether i was straight or or gay so that's that's so for him that could even be a, a, like a form of flirting like for him that was a totally different experience than it was for you where you're you know what i mean you know what i'm saying sure. like so he oh, could sure. have been like i mean in a way even that was exciting to him and it probably was yeah, I guess to some people it is. I mean, that's probably also why they come. I mean, you find the right audience in the sense of when we're talking about Gone Wild. It's yeah, people yeah. there already. Yeah, showing, yeah. it's called that for a so reason. Yeah, that's Wild. what they're <laughs> looking for. But um, but that one I think is also particularly interesting because it, it sounds so funny to even try and like be intellectual about this. But you know, since the the cell phone came along man we've been in the era of the dick pic and there's yeah. something for women that's so i can't even imagine like i've tried to imagine when i hate girls women i know that complain about it i try to imagine what that would be like and you can't even put yourself in that you know i don't because i don't receive vagina pics all the time you know none of us do but girls have bombarded yeah with those things so to have a guy sending you that and you draw it and put it in an exhibition to me, there's just so many it is different anyway, facets. It to is that. anyway so layered. I mean, um, I remember um, a photographer saying that to me once, where he felt like the nude, you know, whether it's photography or even in art, seems to be hijacked by pornography. Yeah, it is. It's completely taken over. And then there, that is even so layered, but. What I found interesting, though, is that if, I mean, I don't share those images because I feel very, you know, people trust me with that. But, you know, if you would put the image next to the drawing, there's something funny happens because I guess it's also the way it's drawn, but it's, it becomes something else. It does. Yeah. I mean, I, he even shared that with me. Like, so he would. I think he shared it with two of his friends, female friends, the drawing. And they were like, okay, so yes, this was a dick pic, right? As mm -hmm. you were saying. 
but why why am I fascinated by this? And they were, they were not seeing the picture with the drawing. So mm -hmm. something happens the moment you translate it. Well, I don't have to explain you this, of course, but yeah. No, but that kind of fascinated point. me because yeah. that seems to be like another layer there. Mm -hmm. It's obviously interpreted, you no? Know? Although yeah. it's still very realistic. But yeah. No, it is fascinating. That, I remember um, uh, uh, somebody that I used to work with, teach with, we got into uh, this discussion, a debate, and I forgot how what he framed it. But he was trying to make a point that we were drawing from a live model and that as soon as we take that out, and I'm probably ruining it a little bit, but he's like, we're distributing um, pornography. And seeing it in the same sense that like, because you know, like for when you're working for models, some models will let you take a photo, but with the kind of expectation that you're not going to share that. And if you found it on the ground, let's say you at a live model section, session, you take a picture of the model to use later, right? Yeah. The model's nude. If you were, let's say you're riding home and you drop that photo, when somebody else sees that, their inclination is, is yeah, pornography. Yeah. They're not going to be like, oh, look, a model, yeah. like an artist sees it. Yeah. But you take that drawing, and because of the medium, because of the transfer, because of the human hand, and if you drop that same thing on the ground when somebody picks it up, they're not like, oh, look, pornography. Or even that person. They're yeah. like, there's a yeah. work of art, and there's something in that translation that I, I too can't, I haven't been able to really put my finger on. I think it's multiple no. things. But this person was trying to argue that they're one and the same. If I draw a naked woman, I mean, basically this person was taking the Instagram argument. If I draw a naked woman, it is pornography. If I'm very realistic about it. Yeah. And I disagree. No, totally. But then I, I agree. Totally but even when it's sexual, like what you're doing, drawing a, a big erection, it yeah. seems less pornographic when you translate it to graphite yeah. in pencil. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess that's that was, you know, one of the things I was also discovering and finding out. But then, yeah, it's even then what you're saying. It's so layered. Um, it's definitely not that simple. But it's becoming even more complicated now. Okay, we're on this now. Okay. And I was trying to look at it. I knew there was a limit on this. So okay. we're going to have to use this for the remainder. Or... Let's do something. Oh, please save. Please save. Okay. Um, I'm going to open up a new one real quick. Sure. How do I do that? Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's still running. That one's still going? Yeah. Okay. Now we're five. If you're ready, I'm going to delay. Sorry about that. I was really trying to be on the no ball worries. with it. Uh, without losing the rhythm. Okay, and you're saying? Um, yeah, and it's, I think it's getting an even more complicated layer because and now, at least on social media, for example, technology is trying to keep track of what is um, pornography or nudity or art or, you know, and that, that, it's funny what you were just saying, like that it's so much is almost like relative, even from who views it, mm -hmm. you know, and you get the example of the artist or just the bypasser or, and that becomes clear on social media um, because, you know, you see these, it's, I, I forgot what it was, but like at least pretty famous nude paintings that suddenly got banned from, from social media where we've been looking at them for 30 years in the museum. You know? it's like, yeah. And you can't post them now. Yeah. On, on. And that, I think it, what it shows clearly, or to me at least, is that it's super complicated. I, I get a lot of things. I mean, people saying they are searching for that freedom, but also people consuming social media, uh, younger people, you know, that, that um, 
shouldn't be necessarily confronted uh, by that yet at a certain age. But even people just want to relax, browse through social media at work, you know. Mm-hmm. So I, I get... Uh, yeah, with the work you're doing, I mean, that'd be different than just posting like a classical new model. Yeah, uh, sorry. Yeah, 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 no, yeah sure. okay. Um, no, but I mean, what, what some people would really want to share on social that you right now can't. It's, I think it's any, anyway become way too complicated to even think of um, scale or like a solution to that. So I'm very curious on where to the problem of like nudity and what's considered yeah, what pornography. Can, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I maybe I don't know. I I I have a hard time accepting. I mean, I agree with that, but I have a hard time accepting that the our base operation now of any nipple is a bad nipple though is the proper way to approach it. Like that's where we're at now. And and yeah. then even then, there's you can go within that because it's not just the nipple like. Have you seen this project? Like, it's weird to me that you can you can't post a drawing of a of a naked woman, her top, right? But if you blur out the nipple, you can. But then there was a project of photographers who are posting just nipples, and then that's okay. Yeah. So then it's not the nipple; it's the boob, right? It's the under boob. It, none of it makes any sense no. at all. No. So I think that the, our base level of operation is is really. I don't know, needs to be reconfigured. Because I agree with you, like, yeah, that, that's why on Reddit you have NSFW, right? It's yeah. Okay, give me a little yeah. warning of what I'm going to watch, but come on, man. A little boob, a little butt. Never hurt anyone. Yeah. No, yeah, totally. But then there, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, in some cultures it is, you know, so I guess. What, it, what do you mean? It is what? Uh, that is super uh, um, not normal or not. Oh sure, yeah, and but I disagree with it. You know, personally, yeah, some don't want to show knees, but yeah, no. It's so hard. so maybe it's. I mean, well, that, this is maybe a good. You know, artificial intelligence. You know, could help some of you. <laughs> making a boob that didn't exist. Actually, I wonder. I mean, that's an interesting thing. Like we we were looking the other night at those. Uh, Pictures. Walter was showing us portraits of people who don't exist. Right? Yeah, they're AI created. Yeah, exactly. So if they created a, a naked person that doesn't exist, yeah, man. <laughs> no, that, that was stupid. Freudian. <laughs> getting Freudian. Yeah, no, that was really ridiculous. Um, all right, maybe we'll we'll wrap it up here. Um, anything else? Um, no, I'm. I'm... Yeah, unless there was something else you want to... No, no, I was good. I went in a lot more than I thought it was. Yeah, it yeah, was, pretty. We went to quite some extend corners. Yeah, you feel good about the conversation? Yeah, 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 yeah totally, man. Okay, killer. Yeah, no. Thanks again so much for having me. And, um, I think it was a great conversation. It was. Cool. Thanks, Dan. Cool. Um, and I'll say right now, too, thanks for being uh, so accommodating, man. You've been like the most accommodating person allowing me to work next to you side by side. <laughs> Thanks, man. Well, that's, that's been the greatest honor, so. Killer. Cheers to that. Cheers, bro. Thank you. And here we go.